One of the most important keys to a fulfilling life is to live according to your values. The people who are the most in alignment with themselves are the people who do exactly this. But in this universe, there are upsides to every downside, and there are downsides to every upside. What this means is that baked into every value is a positive and a negative potential. And this means that a person's deepest value can become their greatest weakness. In fact, it can become their very downfall. <laughs> in this video, I'm going to explain how any value can be your undoing, as well as what to do to make sure that doesn't happen. First, let's start here. What is a value? A value is what you consider from your honest, authentic core to be most important. This includes what deep inside your heart you really want and need. This includes how you want to be in the world relative to others and yourself. This includes what you want to do and how you want to go about doing it. You have values relative to every sector of your life. You have values relative to work. You have values relative to friendships, values relative to marriage, values relative to parenting, values relative to personal growth, values relative to spirituality, values relative to leisure, and this list just goes on and on. When the things we do and the way we behave in the world towards others and towards ourselves match our values, we experience alignment. Whether you consciously know what your values are or not, you have them. And like most people, you're probably spending your time vacillating between subconsciously acting according to your top values and subconsciously acting according to what you've been led to believe that you should have as your top values instead. Living according to your actual values is the North Star of your life. For this reason, you would benefit by watching my video that's titled The Secret to a Happy Life. But today, we are going one step further, and we're going to talk about the potential pitfall of any value. Every value comes with a potential downfall, and because of this, any value can become your greatest weakness. To give you a couple of examples, let's imagine that a person's top value is achievement. Um, having this as your top value can lead someone to incredible levels of personal growth and self-development and incredible levels of success. But the value of achievement can also lead to a person pouring so much energy into only one aspect of their life that they experience a failure or many in one or all the rest of the aspects of their life. Or it can lead to people around them feeling like nothing's ever good enough. Or it can lead to a person constantly being dissatisfied and therefore stressed and never enjoying their life. And let's be honest, this constant distress has serious implications for their health. Or it might lead to a person's entire identity and self-worth being only about what they accomplish. And so any lull in accomplishment can become a downward spiral to the point of burnout, depression, and even suicide. Or it can lead to a person being blind to being taken advantage of by being made promises of greatness. That's just to name a few. But let's give you another example. Okay, let's imagine that a person's top value is service. With this top value, this can lead a person to having a deep sense of their purpose for being, also having like a felt sense of both contribution and belonging within the world. It can also lead to thriving relationships in which they are deeply valued by the people that they come into contact with because they are givers, not takers. It can also lead to them doing greatly needed work in the world that improves lives. But the value of service can also lead to a blindness around one's own needs and desires, which can make somebody lost in life. Or it can lead to blinding attachment to one's own goodness and therefore moral superiority. Or it can lead to a person getting into relationships that are one-sided and completely depleting. Or it can lead to a necessary self-sacrifice and martyrdom. Without insinuating that dark is bad and wrong, because that's an issue that we face when we have these discussions, for the sake of our understanding, let's say that any value can have a dark side, and that any value can become an open door to a person being taken advantage of, if not outright deceived. A prominent lawyer that I know personally loves to say that every person's got a con with their name written on it. In his career, he's found that many people like to think that they can't be deceived, but every person can in fact be deceived, and in fact, there's a perfect con out there for every person on this earth. And what I will tell you is that that perfect con will always involve your top values. It is also important to know, if you didn't catch it in the previous example, that each value might have several potential upsides and several potential downsides. By holding a specific value, we may fall into none, one, or several of these pitfalls that come along with it. 
So that you can understand this even better, let's look at the example of Peter. When it comes to relationships, Peter's top value is loyalty. This value has made it so that Peter has very strong bonds with his friends and family. No one around him fears abandonment. As a result, he has lots of social support. He gets to experience the gift of being trusted by others. The women in his life also feel safe in relationships with him because his loyalty bends him towards protective behaviors. And he is, let's be honest, cherished by the people in his life. But Peter has a brother named Darius. Darius has a little bit of a gambling problem, and by a little bit of a problem, I mean a really big one. Over the years, Peter has fallen into the pattern of bailing out Darius financially, over and over and over again, no matter the cost to himself. Recently, this has gotten so severe that Darius showed up on his doorstep beaten up. As it turns out, he had borrowed money from a very shady loan shark and then gambled and lost it all. Darius's apartment had already been vandalized as a consequence, and he had been threatened that if he didn't pay up by a certain time, that his girlfriend would be kidnapped. And so, what did Peter do? He took out a second mortgage on his own house to cover his brother's debts. Peter's loyalty has made it so he is now acting as an enabler to his brother's addiction. Is he adding beneficially to his life? No, actually, he's keeping him stuck in a cycle that's detrimental to him. Also, Peter's loyalty has made it so that he holds an allegiance to a person that is consistently detrimental to him. And believe me, he is suffering the consequences, and has been for years. Living according to your values is a must if you want to live a fulfilling life. For this reason, it would greatly benefit you to become consciously aware of your values and to start living more consciously according to them. If you're curious to go deeper with this specifically, I created a deck that you may want to check out. It's called the Inner Compass Deck to help you do exactly that. Then, ideally, with each one of your core values, challenge yourself to list the potential dark sides, downsides, and pitfalls that could come with that value, or each of these top values that you hold. Challenge yourself to recognize where you might already be falling into a pitfall relative to any of your top values that you hold, and decide how you're going to course correct. What I want to say is it isn't about devaluing whatever it is that you value. It's about becoming aware as possible that all of these things in life, including your values, come with shadows, potentially. So it's about becoming aware as possible about the potential dark sides, downsides, and pitfalls that could come with any value that you hold, so as to ensure that you don't fall into them, and to course correct if you do. Have a good week.